Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. It's the start of August already. The third and final month of the meteorological summer. Yes, it is still summer, but you wouldn't necessarily think that was the case after the weather of recent weeks. It has felt a good deal more like autumn. A complete contrast to what we saw last year. Here's a picture I took in Regent's Park and the ground was completely parched. Temperatures had just reached 40 Celsius in the United Kingdom for the first time on record. Now, is there any sign of more summery weather returning as we go through the next two weeks? Well, not in the short term. The animation here runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 1st of August, and at the outset, it's a very disturbed looking picture indeed. There's a deep area of low pressure just to the west, and as I run the sequence, you see that moves eastwards. It brings heavy outbreaks of rain and strong winds. A cool northwesterly flow then moves down the country, perhaps drier for a short time. Friday, fewer showers at least in the south, but it's downhill again for the weekend, at least if you don't like cool wet and windy conditions because this nasty looking feature moves in from the west, it brings heavy outbreaks of rain and strong winds and then cooler showery conditions follow it once more from the northwest. But there are some tentative signs of a change just towards the very end here. By next Wednesday, high pressure is building up from the southwest from the Azores and the showery conditions increasingly become restricted to the northern half of the United Kingdom. That's a long way off though. The 850 HPA temperature and jet stream sequence associated with the same computer model run, so these are temperatures at about 1500 meters above sea level. The orange is very warm or hot at this time of year. The greens indicating cool conditions at least at this level. So what we can see at the outset is the jet stream is making a beeline for the United Kingdom. It's shown by the mottled shaded area and it's very strong for the time of year further south than where it really should be. In the short term that continues to be the case but then towards the end of the week what we see is the high pressure starts building up from the southwest as the jet stream migrates northwards possibly heralding the sign of something a little bit different in the days which follow, but that is a very long way off. Now, temperatures down at the ground level, which we can expect, again, from the same computer model run, maximums here on Wednesday afternoon, 20 Celsius there in central and eastern England, maybe 21 in East Anglia, a little bit cooler as you go further north and west. Disappointing for the time of the year. Moving forwards to Friday, it's still rather cool, and Sunday, nothing has really changed. If anything, temperatures perhaps a degree or so lower than they were earlier in the period. So it's cool, really, through the first week, or at least most of the first week. Rain as well, or showers. The details of the weekend are still uncertain, as I suggested. The sequence which I ran at the beginning showed very heavy rain moving across the southern half of the UK on Saturday, but the high resolution met of this UKV model seems to have that rain a little bit further south, the low pressure perhaps tracking a bit further south from the initial sequence showed. So here we've got the rain moving across southern England, southern Wales perhaps, and central counties through Saturday. There is some uncertainty about its northern extent, but Showers are also likely, of course, to its north, as well as sunny spells, which have been shown there. So if you are planning uh, some outdoor activities on Saturday, then keep up to date with these short range forecasts because the details there are still to be firmed up. Also, it's going to be windy at times, as I've already suggested. At the start of a period there, gusts of 40 miles an hour being forecast by the Morgreps Ensemble in southern parts of the UK. You can see all of the individual lines there very close together, as you would expect at a short lead time. The, the individual runs in the ensemble going through a very similar scenario. But then as you move forwards, they tend to spread out. And there is quite a big range from the 5th to the 7th, so through the weekend of the first week. But quite a number of them have gusts again between 30 and 40 miles an hour in southern Britain as that area of low pressure pushes in from the Atlantic. But as I've been saying, the exact track and the intensity of it is still 
up for grabs, but it looks like it's going to be windy again at the, at the weekend. Rainfall. The aggregate charts for days 0 to 5 in millimetres from the ECM and GFS models. Both point to significant amounts in all areas. The GFS generally has higher totals on this update across Northern Ireland and central parts of Britain. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day charts, once again, there's quite a lot of rain around, distribution up for grabs, but most parts of the United Kingdom can expect significant amounts of rain within the 0 to 10 day period. Quite a lot of it, though, probably falling in the first week, so days 0 to 7. How do the deterministic models compare with each other as we head towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS, Tuesday, August the 8th, and there's a northwesterly or a northerly flow moving down across the country, quite a slack airstream. But there are some signs at this point of high pressure building up from the southwest, as I've been indicating. The Canadian model, quite similar. The high pressure is probably a little bit more advanced than on the GFS. But the German icon, low pressure centered here to the northeast and quite a cool northerly flow still dominating things with high pressure further to the southwest. The European ECM also has a north uh, or northwesterly flow moving down across the UK and high pressure there further west in the Atlantic. Finally, the UK Met Office global model, high pressure there just maybe starting to edge in, but it's a showery, changeable picture at this point. So taking them all together, the Canadian and GFS, the North American models, perhaps a little bit more optimistic about the prospects for high pressure to be starting to influence things across the UK towards the end of the first week. The European models, so ECM, UK Met Office and DWD, the German one, perhaps keeping things more cooler and more showery at this point. But the, the general trend, though, is for things to start to quieten down a little bit towards the end of the first week, but just uncertain about how much. And of course, the key question is, will that trend be continuing as we head through the second week? Well, as ever, at this range, it's all about trends and probabilities, definitely not the forecast specifics. And I'm going to start off with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air temperatures across the top, the thick black line, the 30-year norm, each of the coloured lines there indicates one of the runs from the ensemble model and virtually all of them are below the thick black line through the first couple of days. But there is an upwards trend, the thick purple line, the mean of all the individual runs is climbing and it goes above the 30-year average after about two or three days and it stays there for the rest of the second week. And there are a few runs in there which are bringing in much warmer air. Quite a range though, quite a big spread developing, that the trend is an upwards one. In terms of rainfall, the number of spikes across the bottom isn't great, but there is a risk of rain. It's not completely dry, but it does look significantly dry than it has done recently. Although, as I've noted before, the GEFS isn't particularly good at picking up the development of showers, so there could still be some downpours around at times. As I say, it's not a totally settled picture by any means, at least based on this data. Two meter temperature data table for London. The trend here is also upwards. There's more of this shade of orange, the 21 to 25 Celsius. Also a greater amount of the reds, the 26 to 30 Celsius runs than there have been in recent weeks, just one or two going above 30 Celsius. So temperatures probably climbing towards the average and potentially above it on some days, the possibility at least of warm conditions relative to the norm at times. Up to Manchester, the air temperature profile very similar to the London one. Likewise with the rain risk, I think there are more spikes on this one than the London chart, but not a great deal more, just a, a more, there's, a, there's more chance of rain here than in London, but it doesn't look particularly wet. The two metre temperature data table from Manchester follows a similar trend to the London one. Temperatures are climbing, albeit at a slightly lower level than in the southeast. 
up to Glasgow and once more it's similar it's a similar story the uh, air temperatures are rising through the first few days and then they are fluctuating there around the average so the signal for it to be warmer than the norm is weaker than in the south there are some runs which bring in which bring in significantly warmer air but in general the ensemble mean is staying close to that 30 year average rain well the rain risk here is greater than on the Manchester and London plots. And there are some big spikes in there, some very big ones actually, in a small minority, but just that possibility of some very heavy rain at times through the second week in Glasgow, so in the northwest of the UK, and a general signal though for it to be wetter than in locations further south and east. The two metre temperature data table for Glasgow though also follows the upwards trend of the Manchester and London ones, once again, at a lower level, 16 to 20 Celsius being the dominant colour in that table. So, as is usually the case, but not always, the average temperatures falling as you head northwards. The rain probability charts from the ECM Ensemble, these are showing the likelihood of 5 millimetres or more rain falling on days 8, 9 and 10, so the first three days of week 2. Um, generally, the wettest conditions are likely to be in the north and the west. The lighter shade in there in central and southern England indicates a lower chance, say, between 0 and 20% of rain totals exceeding 5 millimetres on each of those three days. Going forwards to days 11, 12 and 13, the picture here is drier the likelihood of significant rainfall increasingly restricted to the northwest. That fits in with the uh, signal for rising temperatures and the possibility of rising pressure, which is shown here. This is the ensemble mean from the ECM, mean surface level pressure for Friday the 11th of August. High pressure having more influence than has been the case for much of July and likely to be the case of the first week of August. So a significant change being flagged up as at least a possibility here as we go through the second week of August. High pressure building up from resource, perhaps becoming centred close to the southeast of the UK or over continental Europe, it would lead to a greater chance of warmer and drier periods. The GEFS shows a similar theme at the same point, high pressure building up from the southwest, so Friday the 11th of August, but a spoke in the wheels potentially because if we go forwards to Sunday the 13th of August, pressure is already declining southwards. Indications here, again from the GEFS, of it possibly starting to turn more changeable once again. And that's really reflected in the data table showing mean surface level pressure for York, generated from the GEFS. The upwards trend here through the first few days, so lots of yellow in the columns and a growing amount of the orange, the orange 1,026 to 1,040 millibars, but through the last few days, the green start to return, those runs going for between 996 and 1,010 millibars, all pointing towards the greatest likelihood, at least based on this data, of drier and warmer conditions being focused on the middle half of the second week of a forecast period, but towards the very end, the possibility of it starting to turn more mixed once again. So to summarize, week one, it's unsettled and cool with wet and windy periods. There could well be some heavy rain around at times, very unseasonal. Week two, it starts changeable with showers and perhaps rather cool weather but the chance of dry periods increases, particularly in the southern half of the UK as high pressure begins to build. Temperatures recover and there is a chance of some warm days being in the mix. So, uh, there we have it. It's more of the same for the first week. Wet at times, windy and rather cool. But there are indications of more summery weather returning, at least for a time, and particularly to the southern half of the United Kingdom as we head into week two. It's a long way off though, and is not definite. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. 
If you did, Van ever, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Remember as well that you can stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thank you very much for watching now. Bye.